okay so we have been setting up new laptops for our computer upgrade project and this is one of the laptops that we are setting up and one of the first steps that we do is to flash the bios or update the bios on the laptop so basically bios is a software that talks to the hardware to make sure that it's performing its function so when we say flash the bios it means we update the bios and make sure that the bios has the latest drivers for the hardware just to make sure that everything is compatible that the hardware drivers are up to date and we don't encounter any issue after we set up the computer and give it to the user so when we flash the BIOS, we get the BIOS file and download it from the manufacturer's website and then store it in a USB flash drive. So make sure that the BIOS file has the motherboard and version that matches the laptop that you want to update. So I do have the BIOS file in here. I'm just going to plug in the USB power on the laptop and just wait for it to boot up and then press delete and that usually takes you to the BIOS page and it should look like this it would say BIOS on it and then we usually just go to the advanced tab and at the very bottom or when you see the BIOS update that's what you select and select BIOS update again and then just select the USB stick here in the options and select the file my file is called this one not the text make sure it's the correct file not the text file or the PDF file there and then just go through the process just say yes in here and the BIOS will start updating now that it has the file okay so just want you to proceed with the flash update now that it has checked that it matched the correct versions and make sure that it's plugged in with the power as it's not gonna let you continue with the flash update and just wait for it to finish flash update is now complete so we can press any key now and that's it that's flashing the bios okay so if you are working in it one of your main responsibility is to troubleshoot and resolve users issue system issue and other computer problems out there so for today's video i will be showing you some techniques and how to troubleshoot issues better and to be able to resolve issues as quickly as you can or escalate it properly so what if one day you'll get a ticket that the user is reporting that something is not working or is broken like a monitor a computer a printer or some other equipment or device how will you troubleshoot it so you have to start with the very basic and obvious sometimes if someone says that something is not working and didn't give you enough information about it we'll say that the telephone is not working the monitor is not working or this is broken or something and not give a lot of information about it so this technique that i use is from an advanced topic in networking it's the osi model so it has seven layers and from the very bottom is the very fundamental of the osi model which is a physical layer so usually when i troubleshoot these kind of issue that's where i start looking for example, if a computer is reported that not working or broken, I'm not going to open the computer up to see what's broken about it. So I'm going to go into the basics first and make sure that everything, every basic thing is ruled out before taking drastic measures to fix it. So as for the physical layer, hence the name, you should check on the physical aspect of the device or any machine. So check if the machine is powered on first. Because believe me, a lot of users just complain or report something and they don't even check if it's powered on. Okay, so check if it 
it's powered on if it's not powering on make sure that it is plugged in to the outlet sometimes a printer is not plugged into the outlet that's why you can power it on so it's very basic just start from that to rule it out then if it's plugged into the outlet and you are pressing the power button and it still won't work make sure that the power button is lighting up that's an indicator that it is powering on so it's if it's not lighting up maybe there is some internal issue in there so you can rule that out now then next see if the connectors correct connectors or connections are there if it's a monitor and it needs hdmi make sure there's there's an hdmi cable that's connected so that's how you usually start troubleshooting when you are faced with this kind of issues when there's really not a lot of information start with the basics and fundamentals okay so next what if a user reports that they can't log into an application on the web so if it's a web application issue usually there is a problem with the browser so there's different ways to deal with this there's a lot of different methods you can try to rule what's the cause of the issue so if a user can't log into a web application make them try to log in in incognito mode in their browser okay so to get into incognito mode in a browser for example google chrome there's the settings here the three dots on the upper rightmost corner click on that and on the choices just select new incognito mode window and incognito mode should now appear and then you can have the user log in there so incognito mode doesn't save the credentials username and password history so that the user can start with a clean slate start fresh and see if he or she can log into the system in incognito mode then while they are at it if you also have the access to that application might as well try if you can also log into it to just just to rule out that there is no outage with the system or the application itself and it's not the entire system that is down if they are able to log in in incognito mode without any issue or error that means that there's probably something wrong with their browser so the next thing that you can do is to have them try a different browser so if they're using chrome maybe have them use firefox or edge or safari try to see if the application works on that browser if it does work on the other browsers what you can do is to clear the cache on the browser that they're currently using so there might be some corrupted cookies in there or something else so if you clear if you clear the cache it could possibly fix the issue to clear the cache on your web browser for example chrome go to the settings it's usually on the upper rightmost corner and then select settings and it's usually under privacy and security and then there is clear browsing data under privacy and security and there's this two tabs basic and advanced and under basic is the time range and on this tab is a time range on how far back you want the browsing data to be cleared so the very recent one is last hour up to all time or for every browsing data ever that was on your browser usually i just do the last 24 hours for like login issue or maybe last seven days the most and then just select on clear data in here and the browser should be able to clear all the username and password and they can start fresh and that usually most likely fix a lot of login login issues with web applications also another tip is to ask other people if they are having issues logging in to just rule out that it's not a bigger issue and it's just isolated to just one user that is reporting it because if it happens to a lot of people or everyone it's a possibility that the system or the application itself is down or is currently having an outage and sometimes there's nothing you can do until it gets fixed okay so i just want to show you a quick tip right here 
about USB ports. So I have a computer here that's an Intel Nook. And as you can see, there's USB ports here, but they're different colors. So does that mean anything? Is there any difference? So both of these are USB 3 ports. They are the newer standard and they serve the same function. They can connect USB devices, but there's a difference with them. So this yellow one is a special USB port. It's an always on port and you can still get power and plug-in devices in this port even if the computer was powered off or in sleep mode. So if you happen to see this yellow USB port, you now know what it means and you can still plug in devices there like charge your phone even if the computer is on. But for a certain amount of time, it's not like it's always on forever. It depends on how long you're using it. 